Hello. Uh, in this issue of the Bishop's Corner, I am delighted to be able to present uh, the new executive director for the uh, Solano Yolo Catholic Charities, and that is uh, Miriam San Martino. Miriam comes with a lot of experience with regards to immigration, not just in terms of her own professional experience, but also some personal experiences regarding that. And I would like Miriam to just uh, 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 talk to us a little bit about um, you know, what, what brought you to this work, not only immigration work, but also now working with Catholic Charities. Absolutely. I thank you, Bishop, for having me today. Uh, so I am an immigrant from Nicaragua. Uh, my parents decided to uh, bring the entire family uh, when I was about a year and a half. Mm. And it was a risky decision. Right. You know, we, we crossed the border without permission. Uh -huh. Um, but luckily, we, we had a lot of family support in San Francisco, and actually through Catholic Charities in San Francisco, uh, we were referred to an attorney uh, who was gracious enough to give my family a monthly payment plan. Oh. And that was the only way we were going to able to afford legal services. Uh -huh. um, and through that process, we were able to obtain our, our residency um, and our citizenship eventually and become very active members in our community. Um, so. Knowing that as a child, knowing that you're an immigrant and being aware of the anxiety of being found out, uh, you, don't, you don't get rid of that. And so when you've had this opportunity uh, and the many blessings we've had in, our, in, our, in my life, you want to give back. Yeah. You understand. Just describe a little bit, if you don't mind, um, some of the circumstances going on in Central America at that time that kind of, uh, how should I say, brought the family up, up north? Yeah, so in Nicaragua at that time, we were going through a uh, civil revolution. Yeah. We were having a, a change in regime. Uh -huh. uh, we had the Sandinistas coming in, and there was uh, a lot of anxiety and uncertainty as to what was going to happen in the country. Uh, uh, the youth were being uh, persecuted by the military, and so it was very uncertain times for my parents. One of the uh, kind of the hot button issues right now is uh, is this whole DACA program and and uh, let's see and that is uh, what does DACA stand for again? DACA is Deferred Action for That's Childhood right. Arrivals. Yeah. Could you uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, the, the the DACA situation today and um, and and where those um, the dreamers are and 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 what are some of the um, what are the, some of the things that we need to try to do to help them out? So DACA currently, um, although it was terminated by the Trump administration um, under one of the many lawsuits that are challenging the rescission of DACA, uh, the Ninth Circuit Court uh, granted what's called a preliminary injunction. Mm -hmm. uh, and this court has ordered USCIS to start accepting DACA application, renewal applications again. Mm -hmm. So for those that received DACA previously, um, and it's either expired, if it's been terminated, or it's going to expire soon, now they have an opportunity to apply again for the renewal. Mm -hmm. um, prior to this decision, there had been a cutoff date and only a certain amount of DACA beneficiaries were able to renew. Right. But under this new temp uh, preliminary injunction, yeah. Other people are, are others can apply. Now, as Mary, well. could you just describe, uh, in in general terms, you know, who are the the dreamers or the DACA applicants? Who, you know, in many cases, their uh, their situations are not that different from yours That's when right. you came. That's right. Uh, DACA beneficiaries are those that came to this country. Um, they were brought here. It wasn't a decision that they made. Right. Um, many of them very very young age. And so they grew up in this great nation, only knowing this nation, and sometimes maybe even only knowing English. Yeah. And so this is a fabric of who they are. Mm -hmm. And and so that the and I think one of the things that um, again this was the DACA program began under the previous administration, Correct. the Obama administration, and and it was uh, it, you know it's really it it's not a uh, it's not an amnesty program. Yeah. It really is only, in a certain sense it's more of a. Um, uh, it, it gives it gives DACA uh, students some peace of mind while they're continuing to pursue their studies, uh, but it, you know it's it's an it's an administrative relief. It's not there isn't any um, uh, access to permanent status. Correct. And and that's in many cases what we're hoping uh, will come from the Congress presently is that is really to provide. 
uh, a more long-term remedy for yes. the for the DACA students, so that uh, as they so so that uh, uh, they can plan for their future. Yes, that's that's correct. Um, unfortunately, we've we've made a promise to DACA right. applicants that uh, they will be able to live and educate themselves and be active members of our community um, in exchange for a promise that they're going to be safe here for, for right. a short period of time. Uh, but a lot of DACA applicants or beneficiaries are um, highly educated, yeah. very active in the workforce. Mm -hmm. uh, they love this country. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we, we really hope that there's more of a permanent relief for them. And I, you know, I, I, I guess I still hold out the religious hope that uh, Congress and the administration will get something done that will uh, help uh, DACA students out. I believe, you know, I, I'm hoping that there's, there's a lot of negotiating going back and forth, and I, I, it, it, it bothers me that in some sense that the, the DACA students, who again, I think in many cases are really um, are, are being held hostage by some of the negotiations that are going on, but I... I, I there is, a, I believe, a bipartisan uh, consensus that something should be done for them. And, yes. I, and I, would, I would hope that they could provide a solution for the DACA students and, and, then, and then negotiate some of the other immigration issues uh, apart from that. But let's go ahead and give this population that everyone recognizes um, should be helped. And, yes. and that let's, let's go ahead and provide them uh, uh, with, with a remedy and then and pursue some of the more difficult and challenging uh, immigration issues set, uh, apart from that. Yes, that is, that's definitely our hope. <laughs> yeah, well, good, good. So I'm hoping that uh, the, those of you who are part of the Catholic Legislative Network will, uh, will try to be a voice for, for the Dreamers and for DACA applicants and that we can uh, stand with them in giving them hope for the future.